Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Anchor of the Week. Hello, hello. As always, it is a pleasure to have you join us in today's conversation. And today is a good one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I cannot tell you how excited Zach and I are for this. <laughs> we are starting yeah. a new series on the World Wide Web. Yes. Dun, Internet. Dun, dun, dun. Technology. So I didn't let you give your, your I know it's okay. dramatic. I, I feel like this is probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's going to be great guys. We have so mm. many different episodes planned. Yeah. I'm interviewing so many different people. Um, I'm really just looking at a bunch of different facets of the internet of technology um, and how it affects us. Yeah. And today we're starting off quite spicy. We are right from the get go. We are Cause that's what we do. That is exactly what we do. Yeah. Social media and is it harmful for us? Basically. But okay, we actually want to look at both sides of the story. Here's that is already playing both sides of the well, world. I, I feel like it's fair. I feel like we're, it's not that me and Courtney or myself and Courtney are on kind of one side, but I think we we don't want to take sides. We want to explain yeah. both ends, don't we? Well, that's the thing. This is such a polarizing topic, right? Yeah. So again, if you missed that, it's social media and how it affects our mental health, especially the mental health of young people. And one of the main reasons why we're bringing this up is the Facebook files. And I don't want to assume that everyone's heard about it, but it's been a huge thing. Yeah. Uh, files, internal documents were leaked from Facebook, basically about how horrible they are, essentially how that's how it's been portrayed. That's how it was leaked. Yeah. There was what's called the Facebook whistleblower. Um, the woman that actually took these documents that did an interview on 60 minutes. This yeah. all happened like the day before yeah. Instagram and its partner covering sites like um, WhatsApp and mm -hmm. in Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I, I hope I said that right. Instagram, <laughs> Instagram Facebook, WhatsApp. Insta, yeah. It's those three. Um, they all crashed the next day or shortly after. Mm -hmm. um, so just a lot going on for Facebook. Yeah. Um, and people are mad. Yeah. Well, it's something we're consumed with 24-7, yeah. isn't it? It's something we use for work, uh, leisure, friends, you know, uh, keeping in yeah. touch with people you haven't seen for ages. It's, yeah. it's literally used 24-7. Yeah. So it's kind of hard not to talk about. It's true. Yeah. And before we get too much further, I want you guys to know as well that we have an interview with an actual young person yes. actively using social media. Yeah, TikTok account. A TikTok account, yeah. So we know it's not exactly Instagram, but it's a great perspective. So that's an interview with Jordy coming later on in the episode. Yeah. So make sure you stick around for that. But before then, we're kind of going to have Adder, aren't we, Zach? Yeah. I mean, the reason why we had Jordy on um, was because he talked about the positive influence it's had on him and kind of what he, how he wants to use the platform to then yeah. also make a positive influence. And I feel like with a lot of the things that's come out recently, it's... So negative. Yeah, very, very kind of putting them down. Face, yeah. Facebook particular, yeah. uh, but in particular, but we're kind of going to kind of cover just social yeah. media in general. Exactly. We're going to talk specifically about Facebook, but we know that this applies to everyone, you know, but yeah. Facebook is the big conglomerate, you know, the one that has owns it all, you yeah. know, and yeah. um, is the trendsetter is the one that like really paves the way and always has been, yeah. you know? Yeah. So great. Yeah. Cool. Do you want to start us off with some statistics? Zach? Let's do it. I yeah. I feel like that's what you want to do right now. We do. <laughs> it's exactly what I want to yeah. do. Um, we have a few stats that we kind of, uh, after some research, so I'm literally just going to, Read them out as they are. Um, but 13.5% of teen girls say Instagram makes thoughts of suicide worse. 17% of teen girls say Insta, Instagram, uh, makes eating disorders worse. Yeah, just to clarify that one. Um, yeah. So two huge stats there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. really just generally Facebook are fully, I say fully, well, they are fully aware of how damaging kind of, or how, how much the platform affects, yeah. especially teen girls. Yeah. And I think this is, again, this is the aspect of the files that we're going to be focusing on. There are so many different issues, so many different topics yeah. were in the files. We'll get to those probably at different episodes, but this was the main thing was that people were saying, Facebook knows this, mm -hmm. but they're not doing anything about it. And then you got a whole mix of responses, you know, people that are very angry, people that are like, yeah, it's really hurt my mental health people you know, saying it's actually not that bad. Like everyone chill out, you know, and yeah. it's just so many different, actually you don't really hear the chill out one very often. Not often. Be I feel like not often. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of putting down. Yeah. It's a lot of putting down. And so it's just kind of, I don't know, it caused Zach and I to have actually just even just talking about this episode and kind of doing research for it. We had a lot of heated debates that I honestly wish we recorded, <laughs> uh, but just over coffee, just trying to figure all of this out Yeah. because is Facebook to blame for the like decrease in mental health in young people. Yeah. Like it seems like, well, yeah, but when you actually look into it, if we dissect it, 
is that true? You know, and mm. I don't want to just say like, oh, because this one statistic says this percentage. So yeah, it's awful. Yeah. You know, how do we how do we go about that? Well, I think kind of the biggest thing with Facebook, Instagram, any social media platform is like, I guess the algorithms, the algorithms, there we go, get that word out. Properly. You got it great. Um, kind of that they they set up and it's it's set up to keep us there, right? But the actual content, the things that we see, view, is actually produced by us, yeah, right? It, by people, by different, well, all sorts of people, you know? It's kind of like a, a, a platform for free speech and you can just or share whatever allegedly. you Allegedly. Yeah, literally. And I, I think Facebook actually kind of that's part of the setup of it is it's a place yeah. where everyone can just share yeah. what they want. We can get to <clears throat> post censorship in another episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is to come. <laughs> that so is to come. Stay that's tuned. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, again, like just the content is from us. Yeah. It's from people. So it's, it's, I mean, I think we, we don't want to say that Facebook and Instagram and these, these different platforms, they don't make things worse. Cause I think for sure, I think we can all agree that the algorithms you know, they're there to keep you there. They, they, it's set so up. So it's whatever entices us. Yeah. The like, juicy stuff. You yeah. Know? And the stuff that contradicts a lot that are, you know, violence or whatever, just a, I guess, juicy topics. I think that's yeah. maybe a good way to sum it up. Because we like gossip. Yeah. We uh, do. We do. And it's there to keep you looking at these, yeah. the gossip and the, the, the violence and whatever. Um, you know, so I think it's fair to appreciate and understand that Facebook and the platforms, I guess, let's just call it social media platforms. They definitely have a role in just, you know, the way I like to look at it is they speed the process up in terms yeah. of, or they just exaggerate the issues, yeah. you know, but the issues I feel like are somewhere else or the causes, I guess. The causes, yeah. yeah. Cause that is very tricky, right? To say that, well, Facebook gives you X, Y, and Z. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have the exposure to Facebook, would you still be struggling with that depression, with that anxiety, with that? Uh, body image issue, you know, with whatever it is, it could even be fear. Like it's a lot of different things, right? Yeah, yeah. Would that still be a struggle for you if you weren't on Facebook or on Instagram, you know? Yeah. And again, for like this specific topic, it was mainly Instagram in yeah. the, um, in like the report in the document about this. Um, and I guess the comparison aspect of it, but then that brings you to like the topical, if I wasn't comparing on Instagram, would I not be comparing in real life? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I would be, Yeah. you know, and comparison isn't necessarily like an online issue. That's a human heart issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I compare myself to my friends all the time. You know, yeah. I compare myself to you sometimes, Yeah. you know, mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go. No, there. no, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, but you know what I mean? And there's yeah. always going to be something that you're going to stack yourself up against. And it's true. When you're on social media, you are consumed with so much more that there's so many more people, people you don't even know. You know, yeah. I can compare myself to you, for example, but because we're friends, I have this level of understanding like, okay, yeah, well, I know where he's coming from or I've seen his journey. You know, it's been hard or, you know, mm -hmm. what, but he's been there for me. Like, it's great. He's been a good co-host, you yeah. know, but when it's a stranger on the internet, you don't have any of that. No, yeah. Where's the empathy? Where's the compassion? It's yeah. just comparison. Yeah. It's, you don't know anything about this person's life. But yet you subconsciously are thinking, I have to be like them or I'm not as good as them or I am better than them, mm. which is also equally unhealthy. And I think yeah. we really need to also take note of that. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah, and it has, yeah, yeah, So sure. social media, I think a bad role it plays in this is that it has distanced us so much emotionally from people mm. and it connects a lot of people, but it doesn't usually establish on the day to day. I'm not saying it's not possible, but deep actual connections. You know, you're connected, but you're not connected. Yeah. If that makes sense. So I think that's maybe a downside in how yeah. it does actually affect your mental health because it's almost like we stopped thinking that we're looking at people. Yeah. You know, and that's a whole other technology debate topic yeah, if you yeah, want, yeah. like yeah. robots and AI, mm -hmm. but especially like, you know, teen girls. I know we read a couple of stats yeah. off of that in particular. You know, they're at it's a just that kind of I guess age from 12, 13 onwards, kind yeah. of the 18. That's a, that's an intense time. They're tough years. Yeah, they're tough years. Speaking you from know. experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, you know? So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, and that's when you're allowed onto those platforms. Isn't exactly. It? I, think the age, I think it's 13 or something. It's like usually that. 13. I yeah. think it's for all of Facebook sites. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so straight away when they're, when they're going to come up with, I guess, things, personal things, issues, whatever that they, they want to deal with, straight away they're also in, involved in this, 
Facebook free speech world of just yeah. where there's so much to consume. There's you know? exactly. Yeah. And like we know, and people have been saying this all the time with the generation of overconsumption and all of this stuff. And it's also true. But like, I feel like we just say that, you know, but do yeah. we actually look at what that means for us, you know? Mm. And also that we can say no. Yeah. I, you know, through this whole conversation, I have many, many opinions about this, but <laughs> um, like, I love social media. Like, I have a real heart for it. Mm -hmm. But I always, like, when I talk to people about it, I'm like, you have to understand that it is a computer. Yeah. You are a human. You have power over it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can say no. You can turn it off. Mm -hmm. You can shut it down. You can unfollow people. Yeah. And I think sometimes we forget that. And it just becomes a cycle of being consumed. And, yeah. Yeah. And almost like, you feel almost powerless. It's true, yeah. I, I, I kind of, I really like to use, like, mm -hmm. the example of, so, for example, if you are going to, if... Right now, myself, I'm going to go and work for uh, a co-op, just off the top of my head. I go in right now. I'm not well equipped, right? I don't know how to work the till. I don't know where things Co-op is go. a grocery store, by yeah, the way. Just, oh, yeah. Let's just clarify that. Clarify now. <laughs> or Tesco. Oh, I guess that's another English one. Just um, yeah. an English grocery store. Yeah. Walmart. Well, oh, God. There uh, we are. Anyway. Okay. He went there. He went there. You are in North America now. Congrats. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so, but, you know, if I go into there into the shop or whatever. I don't know how to work the till. I don't know where things are. I don't know how the, the backstop change works and things like that. Like then I'm going to go into it kind of, I'm not prepared. Right. Yeah. I can't, I can't face this and really it's just going to be too much for me and I'm not going to do a good job and negative things will come from that. Whereas if I've got a manager who's looking after me, I've got someone who's showed me how to work the till. And you know, so I, if I want to translate it, it's like, I don't know, I've got someone who I can process things with in real yeah. life. You know, when you go into Facebook and you don't have the support systems behind you, I don't know, you're not really well prepared to face these things, right? Yeah. You know, so in my case, it would be, I have someone that I can process things with. I'm, I've got a good friendship group uh, that I'm part of, you know, that, that are healthy, that I'm able to talk through yeah. things that I'm processing, that I'm struggling with, you know, so I'm not going, so I'm going into Facebook or whatever social media platform. It's almost like you're prepared to face whatever comes at you, you know, yeah. just, just cause you have more, I, I call it support systems in place. I just feel like that's a, a nice way to put it where you just have, I don't know, support to help you really. Yeah. Cause a lot of people find, try and find their solutions or kind of process things in the social media platforms. Yeah. And that is a, you're usually not going to find yeah. the solution where the problem also no. is. No. Um, yeah. So that's just food for thoughts. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting too, because now I'm thinking about like restrictions, right? So some people would say, well, that's great, but also it is Facebook's job. You know, it's a social media's job to put in restrictions. So you almost don't need to watch yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? And that is for me a very slippery slope, you know, and that was one thing about the, actually, so the 60 minute whistleblower interview that, that we watched, um, mm -hmm. Like that's one of the things that really stuck me as she was her main thing was Facebook needs to put in more restrictions. Facebook needs to become a safer place. Yeah. They know they need to be safer. They have to become safer. And I was kind of like, yes, but then the more restrictions you put in place, the more you have to actually limit what people say. When do you stop? Yeah. You know, and if Facebook is who supposed chooses to, that line, who right? chooses the line? And does yeah. that not mean that Facebook will have to then align with every, in every situation with a side? Yeah. I think she even mentioned the government kind of stepping in and having a say on kind of the restrictions that can go behind yeah. Facebook. I mean, there should be, I think there should be some regulated, like how old should you be to get a social media account? Like what if yeah. that was... Relooked at really. Yeah, yeah, you know, but then again, how much government involvement is actually going to yeah. give us free speech? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a tough area. It's so uh, I tricky. Mean, yeah, who chooses that line yeah. and who says what you can and can't do. You know, you have someone who's tr whose idea of truth and right and wrong, you know, could be very different to yours. You know, exactly. I feel like you're, you, you're constantly going to have that, I guess, change of opinions and thoughts and stuff. <laughs> Look, that's not to say that Facebook should be doing more because uh, it's not to say that Facebook shouldn't be doing more because they definitely should. And they, yeah. you know, they have a responsibility. They've got a big baby in front of them now. It's a, it's a yeah. huge weapon, really. So it's, yeah, it's giant. Yeah, I feel like, there are things that they can do, but also it's just important to look at kind of, I don't know. We have the full picture. Yeah. You know, because I, I think we're so 
good at blaming. When there is a problem or when we are hurt by something or affected by something, we always want to look for someone to blame. You know, we all do this in our personal lives, but we also do it in this big sense. Mm -hmm. Who's to blame? Well, Facebook's to blame, right? Facebook needs to be held responsible. Okay, yes. But am I holding myself responsible for the way that I'm acting in creating a safe space and making Facebook, Instagram, whatever, you name it. Yeah. Am I doing my part to make it a safe space? Because at the end of the day, what they're restricting is other humans. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we are receiving content that is made by other people. Yeah. And I think that is something that we really need to take into consideration and that needs to be brought up in this conversation. Yeah. Because we are blaming computers and we are blaming algorithms and we're blaming, you know, billionaires, head of companies, which yes, all needs to be held responsible. But are we willing to keep ourselves responsible? Mm. What am I putting out there? Am I putting out something there, like something out there that is going to harm someone's mental health? Yeah. And if it is, that is on me. That yeah. is not on the algorithm to block it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have any thoughts on no, that. No, well, I completely agree. I yeah. think it's just like I'm so much more, not so much more, but I'm just very much on the side of like, we need to take responsibility here. Yeah. Because we are the ones, for me at least, I just I feel like we are the, the 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 problem, and we are the what's causing kind of like we're the ones that have this influence, like you've just been saying. Yeah. So, as as good as the algorithm can be, and and whatever you know, I don't know. It's it's we're the ones creating that content. Yeah, um, and you look at it too, and people like just do hate comments and just a lot of different stuff that like you know, the algorithm can't, you know, come or like the people that work in the integrity department. So Facebook, they can't go to every single comment because yeah. there's so much, yeah. you know, like we talk about, like, we don't really talk about cyberbullying quite as much as it, I think we used to when like mm-hmm. the internet came out, you know, when I was in school, like it really became like a, a, thing, yeah. a big thing, yeah. you know? And so that was like a huge topic, you know, mm-hmm. but like the heart of humans hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. Like we still are kind of awful people if yeah. we don't work on being better yeah <laughs> like yeah a lot of you know facebook's got a lot of grief from i guess you know it was a business right to start with it still is a business and i think yeah I've, I've, people forget not that this is an excuse for them because it's not and i think because what because of what it's turned into now they have to look at this loads more and yeah. and be a lot more cautious and th- actually like process things a lot differently than what they would before. But yeah. again, it's a business. It, you know, yeah. it wants to lock you in. It wants you to, it wants to gain new followers. It wants to have more people interacting. It wants to make more money. It's, yeah. it's a business. It right? is a business. But what I, it is now yeah. is like a platform, uh, well, a free speech platform. It feels exactly. like, yeah. I mean, well, it started out as a school project from Mark Zuckerberg, right? It was mm-hmm. just to connect his like university campus. Yeah. And then it became this whole thing. Um, but I read an article that was literally titled, Is Facebook Monetizing Misery? Yikes. And I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, but like, isn't everything? Yeah. You know, how do they get yeah. us to buy new clothes by telling us that our old clothes suck? You know, how do they get us, you know, to go to gyms? Sorry, I know you're a personal trainer, but <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's not going to be, I'm being no, a little extreme. Go, go for it. Go for it. I'm being a little extreme, but you know, <laughs> like, you know, do this diet plan, go to the gym, whatever, because your life right now is not as good as it could be if you didn't have this, like this is age old marketing stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know? And I think we forget that. And we, when it becomes so personal and I think because everyone puts their lives out, you know, when it comes to Facebook and Instagram and it's like direct commenting on yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, but we forget that this is how it's always been. Yeah. Right. Like businesses are here to make money. And if we're content with what we have and in who we are, we're not going to want to need to buy more. Yeah. Like this is an age old cycle. Yeah. Um, so I just think we need that perspective as as well. Yeah. But are they monetizing misery? Well, I mean. Yeah, but. Yeah, but so also. Are other things. Yeah. So is everything else. Yeah. Well, let's let's see what Jordy has to say. Yeah. I mean, this is TikTok specifically, but yes. again, it's he has a platform. He has a decent following on there. It's about seventy seven thousand, yeah, I think, last time like I checked. Yeah. So he's doing well on there, so to speak, in terms of yeah. following. So. Um, let's call him up. Yeah. See what he has to say. Okay, so we have Jordy on on the line, so to speak, on yes. Zoom. Welcome, Jordy. Welcome, mate. How you doing? That's me. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Yes. Good, mate. Good. So, look, mate. We wanted to have you on because, like, when I when I met you, actually, it's kind of a funny story, but uh, when I met you in London, um, you kind of talked about how TikTok was a positive influence for you. Um, so we. 
kind of that's what we want to hear about uh hear your kind of story today um but just before we yeah. go into that give us a little brief on kind of you know what what is it you do like with the TikTok, um what kind of uh, videos do you like to produce things like that yeah so funny enough i started TikTok about a year and a half ago and if i'm honest with you i i didn't even think about TikTok a year and a half ago i wasn't even my mom wasn't even on that and my mate introduced me to TikTok. And he said, he said, this is the perfect app for you. It's it's viable. You can do content, just be yourself and enjoy it. So I, I started it and I got a, an account to um 30 something K and got banned and give up with it. I completely stopped. My mate said, you keep going. You've been banned. Keep going and keep pushing yourself again. So I made this account that I'm on now. And it's literally just been, I, I want to make women. This is how I, I've set out to build my social media and build the way my tiktok is i've set out to hype more women up give more women a confidence boost because i see on my for you page a lot of bigger women get hate i see them and i think it's like there needs to be some kind of percentage where women have more confidence and less insecurities in their body because the more women that i can push onto this app to be more confident in their body the more happier that makes me feel wow that's great yeah, yeah. that's cool now i'm interested i generally you feel like a lot yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I say it sounds really interesting because you said that you got banned, and I would really love to talk about that for yeah. a quick minute before we move on. Why was that? You know? Yeah, I got banned. Haters. I got trolled quite a lot on that account, mm. and I got a lot of death threats sent to me. And from that account, I got banned from people just reporting me for no reason. Wow. Wowzers. So oh. you're saying that on the same app that gave you death threats is also one that gave you extreme confidence yeah can you kind of explain that yeah. a little bit because that sounds very contradictory yeah it does yeah yeah so believe it or not when i started tiktok my confidence was it was good but it wasn't it wasn't there and i'll tell you what after making the amount of content i do and just me being myself it makes me feel so good about myself to go on camera and show my face a lot of people some lads can't do that believe it or not some lads haven't got the confidence to show their face and i I kind of built the confidence up by myself. I haven't really had anyone there to help me. Obviously, I've had my family to support me, but it's mainly been me just picking content out, trying to trying to just enjoy it. And my confidence has generally come from that. Me coming on the camera, showing people what I look like, showing people. The... And death threats come with it. Hate comes with it. That's natural. A lot of people get that. Don't get me wrong, if you're a big, if you're a massive, massive TikTok or you're a massive content creator on this app, you're going to get that. A lot of people can't handle it, believe it or not. They have a really hard life and they can't handle it. But I tell you now, I've gone through so much hate in my life now, I'm over it. If I get hate, it doesn't bother me anymore. So, you you, you know, did, did you then create the TikTok account, like, straight away, your mission was to kind of help, like, um, girls with their, with the insecurities that come along with I guess TikTok or the social media things like was that just your yeah. goal from go from the start? Yeah, because I have a lot of I have a few girl mates who have a massive confidence who have massive insecurities in their body, massive right. insecurities, and I I all I tell them every day is to keep their self positive, never be ashamed of your body. Look, no one's perfect. None of us are perfect. We're not. We're all human. We've all got a body that we should be proud of. No matter how big, no matter what size you are, we should be happy in the proud proud of the body we've all got. And the way that bigger women get disrespected on stuff is disgusting. And I think if I can make at least one percent of more women be confident in their body, then I'm making myself happy as well. Do you think? Do you think a lot of that comes from something like TikTok or Instagram or Facebook? Like, does that does the the yeah. hate and the kind of like the insecurities? Do you think that stems a lot from social media? You know, I believe that if a lot of if a lot of bigger women don't get enough likes on their account, because I've seen this before, and my best, one of my best mates said this, <laughs> doesn't get enough likes on her account, she's got a lot of followers, she starts going down, she starts getting depressed, upset, thinking she's not good enough. It's got nothing to do with likes, nothing to do with the way, like, people can Photoshop their body, people can go on Instagram and make their body look absolutely perfect, and you meet them in real life, and they're bigger than what they are. Because that's what a lot of people do. They want to look perfect for the Instagram caption or TikTok caption. Be yourself. And if you're just yourself, then people who don't respect you, they just ain't worth your time in life. Yeah. There you go. Do, do you just one last one, mate. Um, 
do you think so if TikTok was stripped stripped away from you uh yourself you know your account uh let's say you just couldn't go on TikTok again for example uh just to put it simple would you do you think you'd still have that same confidence do you think you could still kind of do what you do almost or just have that same kind of go abouts thing is mama but a few of my family asked me this and said if TikTok was gone what would you do do you reckon you'd still be right my answer to that is yes I'd still make I'd make rules on Instagram even though I don't use that I'll still do videos obviously I've got people on Snapchat as well I help people on Snapchat and give people advice during the day but yeah I do think I'll still have confidence I still have because that's me as a person just because one up's down doesn't mean my confidence should drop I think no matter what, if an app drops, like I'm still going to be me, still going to keep positive and keep pushing myself to help people, more and more people. Yeah. I really like that you, you've kind of gone like, oh, I'm, the influence that I have, I'm going to try and make a positive effect with that. I feel like yeah. that's an interesting perspective. Quite often it's like all about consuming and it's not like very much on the yeah. kind of influence that we have. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you have anything else? No. Me? I think yeah, that was great, cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your unique perspective as yeah, well, because again, that. today's episode, as we've been talking about, is um, yeah about social media and mental health of young people. So yeah, I think this is a really good fresh perspective. Mental on. health is a big thing with the mental health is a big thing on social media. Mental health can affect people in different ways. Like you can get a lot of people who suffer from mental health, but they don't show on social media. But they don't want to show how they're actually feeling. They want to put a front face on and be happy. Most videos, most of these big creators, that's what they do. They put a front face on because that's what the fans want to see. That's what their supporters want to see. But deep down behind the camera, they're, they're, they're upset. They're crying. Sometimes they're going through time. They just don't show that, which which more people should because that will just see the real them. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So if you awesome. could leave us with one line, like maybe one thing of, okay, this is what I want people to take away from my social media. Just one sentence. What would it be? One sentence. Yeah, if you could do that. <laughs> On the spot. Um, my motto has always been, ever since my grandmother passed away, my motto has always been keep smiling, keep positive. What's it? Uh, keep smiling, keep positive. That's literally it. If I could say one sentence, one sentence. <laughs> so no matter what people throw at you, be confident. And if people, if people think negative of you, then just be yourself. That's all you can be on social media. So don't let anyone bring you down and just be you. There you go. Brilliant. Oh, Jordy, class, mate. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you, Jordy. That was class, mate. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Um, so that was good. Um, I think yeah. he actually ended on a really cool note on just the idea of like influencing and yeah. not consuming, basically. I mean, I know that's not exactly what he said, but... Just the idea of like our influence and how can we affect social media. Exactly. It's like having that understanding that everything that I'm doing is going to affect someone. Yeah. You know, so why not make it a positive effect? Mm -hmm. Because especially if the, you're realizing that you're struggling maybe more with mental health, like um, because of social media, maybe it's, you know, exasperating problems or triggering things or making things worse or mm -hmm. whatever it is like, okay, but you have the power then to do the exact opposite for someone else. Yeah. And if we all get into this mindset of, hey, I can make someone else's mental health a bit better, mm -hmm. you know? Also, can we just talk about the fact that he was banned because of people were yeah, literally leaving death yeah, threats. Yeah, I know, I know. But then he still, instead of then just, you know. Bailing. Bailing or so becoming desensitized mm -hmm. or becoming a hate account himself, you know, chose to come back and was like, no, no, I'm going to like encourage people. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and he has his way of encouraging people, which is fine, you know, and I think yeah. we all have different ways, but. Um, I just thought that was such like almost poetic justice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like funny whole... that we were talking about this. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. We had no idea that part of a story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole idea of like circling back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah it's, yeah, it's not like like taking responsibility in terms of, okay, I'm not just going to be affected by this, but also like, okay, like what's my role exactly in this social media space almost? Yeah. You know, how can I, you know, we've all got, what 500 600 followers or something on instagram depending on who you are i mean i i think i've got a bit more than that i think me too i think I'm you're being just, humble but it you know on average we've all got something like that so exactly that's five or six hundred people you can have some kind of positive influence on exactly you know, with, the, with the content you're producing exactly. like we all show up on the news feeds you know I, I think we'd probably be quite surprised at the influence we can have yeah with our accounts exactly you know? 
Exactly. And I think when you remember that there's a human on the other side of your screen, yeah. you, I mean, unless you're really not okay and on which point, okay, that's a whole different topic, you know, but yeah. if, you know, I think for almost everyone, if you realize that there's a human on the other side, yeah. you care about them yeah. to a certain extent, you know, you don't want harm for them. Yeah. So you care about their mental health. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole idea is that if we're looking after one another. And then as we said earlier, creating a safe space, mm -hmm. if we're the ones that are creating that atmosphere, you know, like we can change things. Yeah. And I don't want to be super idealistic or like utopian about this because mm -hmm. yeah, I get it. Okay. There's a lot of not okay stuff yeah and stuff that's out of our control and it's as bad. just like yeah. the, it is bad just people with personal accounts and it yeah it is bad and there's some really dark and dodgy stuff that goes on yeah. on facebook instagram you know like that is completely true mm. but for the general day-to-day -day, i think if we come at it as more of like a more of an aggressive like on the mm. offense as opposed to the defense yeah because then we stop being just consumers as you said and we actually say hey i actually have something to give in yeah. this situation mm -hmm. yeah i think like you know, what's going to cause real change and what is the solution here? I think if we go, oh, Facebook need to work on not doing the algorithms that they do, you know, I still think the problems are still there. And I think that doesn't bring solution. I think it just slows the process down. Mm. So I think the things that bring solution is, again, I think yeah. where the problems are is us and the yeah. people. So, you know, we're the ones producing the content. So if we can produce better content, I guess, to put it in those words, yeah. or if we can, like like we're saying now, just take a stamp, be aggressive and try and make change and speak in truth and like putting real values out, then yeah. I feel like that's where the change and the solution is, as opposed to like going social media, Social media needs to change their things, which they do. I, again. Like, it's, if we're going to hold one accountable, we're hold, we've got to hold all accountable. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's a good way. All to, users are players in yeah. this, you know yeah. what I mean? Like... <laughs> That's good. That, that's not a pretty cool thing. <laughs> you have yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. But we all have a key role. Yeah. Just as much as they do. I, exactly. You know, again, we don't want to like, just be like, oh, Facebook's fine. Yeah. No, of no, course not. It's like, not. And they yeah. need, they have a lot to work on for sure. But let but them. But they are working on it somewhat. Yeah. I, say. Again, that's something we, we do want to look into <laughs> kind of going down the road. But yeah, they yeah. are good or bad job whatever yeah. but they, they are and i think we need to not just be like facebook this is your problem to sort out yeah you need to fix this we also need to kind of take a reality yeah. check and check out yeah. what we're doing it's true and something just another statistic i don't i didn't write down the exact one um which is a mm -hmm. little bit unfortunate um but something to just call to mind as well is that in like the the facebook's mental health um kind of like document research right it showed that majority of young people majority of them mm -hmm said that like okay yeah like there are hard things but it's outweighed by the positives the yeah sure the positives outweigh the negatives mm -hmm. and it's a smaller percent of people that say like no like it's really it's hard for me it's really damaging and in no way do i want to negate the small because those are people that small yeah. percentage those are actual people you and know and valued yeah valued that you know need to be seen that deserve to have a you know a good time like mm. do you know what i mean like yeah. and to know that they're they're loved but we also have to look at it from a big picture. And because, again, something in the whistleblower interview that she said um, was that people, like, love to look at anger. Or, like, they people don't want to look at angry things. You know what I mean? Like, mm. but Facebook only shows them angry things because it gets more emotional, more clicks or whatever. Right. But for me, I'm like, this is almost the exact same thing. Because mm -hmm. no one talks about the positive aspect yeah. of it as well. Or, like, hey, actually, a lot of teens do find that they're they're connecting. Yeah. We still need to do more for the other percentage of people that are being harmed by their mental, you know, or mm -hmm. like uh, mental health decrease because of Facebook. But we, I think we really need more full pictures. You know, we can't always just look at the negative. We also have to look at yeah. the positives. positives. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't think, honestly, my personal opinion is that I don't think anyone at Facebook has like malicious intents. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know, against people. Yeah. I think a lot of things just get taken out of hand yeah. and out of control. Um, yeah yeah i and just think that, that be, is something yeah. that they need to work on you 100%. know that, for sure like i think we can yeah uh, all agree on that yeah but i th also just want to yeah make sure we leave this not on a super depressing note or yeah, yeah. everything sucks note or yeah. well I, honestly, take it down no, kind of note you know but, but, this but is, it's like exciting honestly it, yeah. it's like just realizing the influence that it does have yeah but then also like the influence that we can have as well on these things yeah you know we can make change if yeah. if we really want to and it doesn't yeah. even it doesn't even just go on the platform, you know. If you really want to make change, then do it in your real life. Yes. <laughs> well, literally though, I was gonna say, like yeah. like with the support systems idea, 
I was saying before, like, <laughs> like talking to you face to face and like yeah. just being able to like make sure you're in a community or yeah. you're in just, I don't know, being able to process things face to face rather than it just yeah. your life being consumed online. Exactly. Exactly. And I remember, as we said before, like, like you don't have to be under it. You know what I mean? Like if it's bad, like you, you can just delete it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know that sounds like almost like I'm minimizing a problem, but I think sometimes people think that they can't, you know, I was listening to an interview with a girl that she literally said she knew that Facebook and Instagram were causing harm, but she knew she couldn't delete it. And then she eventually did. And she got, you know, better or whatever, yeah. which was awesome. Like amazing. Good for you. Um, but like, hey, like you can, you know, or yeah, like yeah, unfollow yeah. those people, even if it might be awkward, yeah. if they're not good for you, just mute them or unfollow them yeah. or like be really like on like, I guess maybe aggressive. Intentional. Yeah. And intentional. Yeah. Intentional. Yeah. I say aggressive. No, aggressive is good as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm being like, okay, how do, how, what can I do to make this a safer space for me, for others, you yeah. know? Yeah. And if we really go for that, I don't know. I feel like it's not going to change everything. Yeah. But it will, you know make some progress yeah, it right will. it has yeah. to yeah 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 brilliant wow <laughs> this is the episode already yeah i know incredible we could go on and we on we actually and on. could seriously um, we could yeah but, i feel like this has so many different aspects to it yeah. But, yeah yeah but we tried to give kind of hopefully we gave you some good and bad things about it but yeah you know i think the main message today is you know we have responsibility we have responsibility and you can have authority in this area absolutely so yeah use it you yeah know? and if you are struggling with mental health like please reach out to someone yeah, you know sure, like yeah. in the in the real flesh if you can mm -hmm. you know because again these are not issues to be minimized but yeah. um but taken care of in the right way for sure you know and then i think yeah as we said mm -hmm. it's now our responsibility to make sure we're creating a space for other people that yeah. they don't feel unsafe yeah so brilliant there we go awesome cool team remember we are on instagram yes we are the anchor of the week check us out we will be posting more. We will be on it a little bit yeah. more. Than, now that yeah. our episodes are, are rolling back weekly, yes. we're, we're, we're back into it. it. So we things. Yeah. And we also have a new YouTube channel. Yes, we do. It is the Anchor of the Week. So we will be transitioning our videos from the Anchor of the Week playlist on the Hope and Anchor Community Church channel to the Anchor of the Week. This next series we'll be posting on both channels. Yeah. Um, so you don't lose us. Uh, but at the end of this tech series, uh, the World Wide Web series, if you will, <laughs> uh, we will be fully transitioning over to the Anchor of the Week. So yeah. it's probably just easier for you to start watching on there. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. We are so excited, guys. We, we are, are continuing next week, yeah. diving deeper into the world yes. of the web <laughs> and technology. <laughs> world Wide Web. The World Wide Web. Yeah. All cool. Right. See you guys next episode. We'll see you soon.